There are some people and organizations in Zambia today whose preoccupation has become criticizing and opposing government at every stage. What is worrying is that some of these people are about the most educated Zambia has, yet instead of using what they went to school for to contribute to the development of the country, they choose to politic and be against Rupia's administration. Some of them served in government at very high level, full cabinet ministers and so on. Today, they lobby to feature on almost all talk shows on private radio and television stations. So is it not about time we see them for what they are? Nkanduluo, a very highly trained microbiologist, now a full-time patriotic front PF Kada, is one such person. She joined the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD, during its first term in office, after what some people have termed befriending a few people. Bear in mind that befriending is in capital letters. Nkanduluo first became Mandevo Member of Parliament through a by-election, and was appointed deputy minister before becoming cabinet minister in Frederick Chilwa's administration, occupying various ministerial positions. Right now, there is no development in Mandevo constituency that can be attributed to her. But she left government in 2001 because of the third term bid that was being spearheaded by the person she today wants to be president of Zambia, Cobra. It is quite clear that it is okay for Luo to have a preferred presidential candidate and exercise the right to express herself, but it is not okay for me to do the same. For the high esteem I have for her, I think Zambia needs her more in a medical diagnostic laboratory. After all, Luo was trained at great cost by Zambian taxpayers' money. The other person that will also stop at nothing to criticize Rupia's administration is Edith Nawakwi. In 2008, she backed Rupia and campaigned for him to be elected president of Zambia. Today, she does not see anything good in Rupia's administration. The only reason Nawakwi campaigned for Rupia in 2008 was because she was hoping to be appointed Zambia's first female vice president. This never happened. Talking about talk show programs on which both Luo and Nawakwi frequently feature, especially on radio stations, it is very clear that most, and if not all moderators or hosts, appear to be biased against Rupia's MMD administration. I do not have to mention names. All you can do is tune in to these programs and prove me otherwise. How else can one explain a situation like the one a caller called Derek found himself in on Friday 22nd April 2011 when he tried to contribute to let the people talk on Radio Phoenix? Good morning, this sir. This is Derek once again. Am I right? Good cut. Be brief. Right? Very fast break. Yeah, let me finish up my point. I think what I want to urge the, the panelists, I think, yeah, let's think I'll get the spirit of love because I've noticed that there's too much hatred. You know, this a hatred for our leaders it will not take this country anywhere uh the previous derek country, how do you love them if they're not doing the right thing you're yeah, preaching no, love no, someone no, out no, there is going yeah, out without no, eating that's where people that. are having a problem can you help them yes what we are saying that uh, let's not hate leaders personally let's hate the bad policies that are in place because we are all Zambians at the end of the day so if you you hate somebody thank you so much derek i'll pick your point too bad for Derek. He was curtailed even before he could make his point. The topic on this day was according to the moderator or host. Conflicts in Africa and the effect on women and children. This was not to be. The panelists, Forum for Democracy and Development FDD President Edith Nawakwi and Nkanduluo, introduced as a household name on Radio Phoenix and wearing two hats, one for the African Women Millennium Initiative and the other for the Society for Women and AIDS in Zambia, 
used every opportunity to hit a Troupier's administration. The moderator did not do much to ensure that the panelists and a good number of callers stuck to the topic at hand. It was all about how Rupia's administration should be removed. In fact, Nawakwi and Luo found it within themselves to call for the banning of this program Stand Up for Zambia. It seems okay for them to have a preferred presidential candidate and freely express themselves, but that is not okay for Chanda Chimba III. Now the difference between this program and the radio phone in shows they feature on is that I made it very clear in the first episode in 2010 that I shall talk about and expose all those that are forever criticizing Rupia's MMD administration. But the biasness against government of some of the moderators on phone-in programs on some private radio stations is what really should be questioned. If the topic is conflicts in Africa and the effect on women and children, it should indeed be just that. And moderators must ensure panelists and callers stick to the topic. Now George Mpombo, former Minister of Defense, is one person who never ceases to amaze me. Appearing on movie TV's The Assignment, he lied when he told viewers that he resigned from Rupia's government because one of the president's sons was cutting an arms deal for Zambia from which he was to get 10%. Mpombo is a loose cannon who, as a matter of fact, first of all never accepted Rupia as vice president. Mpombo, who can now only be best described as embattled, found Rupia's appointment as vice president by Levi Mwanawasa a bitter pill to swallow. That is why he even found it very difficult to accept that when Levi was taken ill in Egypt, Rupia was to take charge of running the affairs of state. Word went round then that Mpombo was saying because he walked Levi to the plane and was the most senior government official to see the president off, with what happened, he should have been acting president. If I remember correctly, George Kunda, as Minister of Justice then, cleared the air. The vice president was to act as president. Levy unfortunately passed on, an election was held, and Rupia emerged victorious. Looking back, it is clear Mpombo was putting up a plastic face, and he could not stomach the fact that the person Levy had brought in from a farm in Chipata was now head of state, his confirmed boss. Now that Mpombo is in a very serious league with Cobra's PF and Fred Namakando members post, it is not surprising that he will pursue any avenue to hit at Rupia. I'm sure if he had not fallen out of favor with the MMD and subsequently expelled, he may not have made the allegations. All cabinet ministers are advisors to the head of state, but apart from making the arms deal allegation, Mpombo has not stated what sort of advice he may have given his boss. It seems all too clear that he is out to paint a bad picture of Rupia and his family in the eyes of the people of Zambia. He is out to tarnish the image of Rupia's son, James, who is involved in legitimate business and was in business even before his father became vice president and subsequently elected president of Zambia. That is why I am saying that people like the former defense minister should be seen for what they are. Mpombo has never come to terms with the fact that Rupia, the humble man in Gambuts, is president and commander-in-chief. Some members of the public I have come in contact with are actually wondering why Mpombo, who said he resigned for personal reasons, today wants to say that he resigned because of an arms deal involving one of Rupia's sons. It is clear Mpombo has some very serious personal issues to sort out, but what is also clear is that even if he turns Namakando's post into his office like he has done since he quit as defense minister, he may find it very difficult to move on after the 2011 tripartite elections. Now I'm sure a lot of people remember this pretty face on television. Yes, Goretti Mapulanga. Well, Goretti has since passed on, but one of the programs she hosted while she worked for the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, ZMBC, was face to face. Sometime in 1992, Cobra, who was local government and housing minister, featured on this program. Goodbye. Your name, King Cobra? You like it?
The man who gave it to me is dead. <laughs> so if somebody die who, is, who gives you the name dies, how can you refuse it? Mm. Accept it. Absolutely. And may his, re may his soul rest in peace for Mr. Yumba. The Cobra gladly accepted this rather satanic name, King Cobra, on national television. And bear in mind, there was no other television station then. So today, Nawakwi and others should accuse me of insulting this man because I referred to him as Cobra? Cobra is up to this day glad to be referred to as such. Well, perhaps not until I started rubbing it in and it dawned to him that the name is not so pleasant after all. Now look at this. Cobra with both hands in his pockets as if to tell Goretti, who in this world do you think you are? Yes, for a good part of this interview with Goretti, Cobra had his hands in his pockets and sat on the edge of the stool as if he was ready to take off to God knows where. When I'm sat, you've got hands. I'd like to see them on the desk. Now, Goretti took on Cobra on issues pertaining to contracts he was allegedly awarding to his cronies, like the issue of building houses. The Weekly Post had written something about some housing construction in Lusaka's Chilenje Township awarded to a company owned by George Memegas, a very personal friend of the Cobra, Mayor of Construction. The problem with the media in this country, you see, Kaunda did not only damage the economy, he damaged your heads. <laughs> and the portholes in your head for them to be repaired, it will take another 27 years, so if maybe, not more. So maybe the MLB now, government me, can send us to school. Uh, no, we don't send you to school. We panel beat your heads. But right. now let me start. First of all, you are wrong, like anybody else, to say that the tender must be advertised. Educate me, Honorable Minister. Two, you are wrong. You are right by saying you pick the best. Now, there are tender procedures. The tender procedure, one, there is a public tender, depending on the time you have. There is a selected tender. The tender board, the tender authority decides. And I would like you to go and tell the weekly post that councils in themselves, they are tender authorities. They don't get permission from the central tender board. That's for the central government. Each local authority is a tender authority on its own. So Two, you no, can, wait a minute. I'm you trying. can get tender from your friend. Now listen, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. two, two, they don't need to rely on those people who are registered by public works, as they put it in their paper. Now, how do you go to tender? You see, you don't even have dictionaries to understand the tender. The tender is, before you go to tender, as the tendering authority or the employer, you have your own estimates. And when you have your own estimates, you are going to accept tenders which you think are realistic and nearer to what your estimates are. And that's why on every tender, whether it be government, private, local government, there is a provision or a clause which says it is not necessary to accept the lowest tender. Cobra has been at the helm of his party since inception in 2001. And 10 years on, he has never called a convention, and it seems he is the PF's president for life. Now imagine him in plot one, and God blessed him with good health, and many more years, wouldn't he impose himself as life president of Zambia? Now one man who seems to know a little something about Cobra is Bwana Mukuba member of parliament. Is a I went with for the past four years. I want to borrow some few words from one of the home speakers of this country. If you want to know the way from the is, ask a hippo. I need you to answer that for the past four years, five years now. It's not a person you can trust. But our councils of the Copper Belt. Our council at the other city council here, we have failed. Oh, yes. Because I just two minutes if Yes. Councilor, some of them are not even supposed to be there. Yes. You will be called a wish of summer because of the mistake which you made. Let us wait.
Today, Cobra is still caught up in the web he created himself, and his stand on homosexuality is public knowledge. The laws of Zambia recognizes gayism. The laws of Zambia recognizes lesbians. The laws are already there. What we need is to implement the laws. Now, one village headman somewhere in Zambia's central province is among the many people who have no kind words for Cobra on this issue. His statement in Lenje is as raw as it was captured. What is very disturbing regarding the issue of homosexuality is that the Catholic Church seems to be confusing and misleading people going by some of what was said on 19th April 2011 by Nicola Girasoli, the Vatican ambassador to Zambia. Homosexuality is one thing and we really say these people need respect. You know, the practice, of course, this is uh, uh, the politician, they, they have their own job. But this is our stand, so we cannot confuse homosexuality with practicing homosexuality. People deserve respect. We cannot politicize a right. So this is the problem. So homosexual people, they need all the respect. So, yeah, we, that's also the Holy Father. It's one thing to say, I'm quoting, that uh, are human beings with their problems, their joys, and these human beings, they deserve respect even though they have this inclination, and must be not discriminate against because of it. So this is very clear, this is the Pope, so it's not, you know, uh, so, uh, and I'm very happy that, uh, you know, it, the Pope makes so clear. So, homosexuality is one thing, and we really say these people need respect. Uh, also, you know, in the Declaration of Human Rights, it's very clearly, you know, you cannot discriminate people because of sex. So. The teachings of the Bible on this matter are very clear, so I do not understand what Girasoli is saying is a human right here. Men having sex with men and women having sex with women, a human right, and that such people must be respected? Lord have mercy. No wonder it is alleged that homosexuality is a serious ritual in some priestly orders of the Catholic Church. And no wonder it seems okay for a Roman Catholic priest to be with another man's wife in some room at a lodge in the dead hours of the night. No wonder the cobra, a so-called Catholic fundamentalist, seems to be okay with gays and lesbians, and in his wild imagination thinks there are laws in Zambia that recognize such abominable acts. Yes, there may be a few people in Zambia who may have flipped to that side, but that does not make it right. It must be seen to it that homosexuality is nipped in the bud. Zambians should actually be very careful with politicians like Cobra, including some clergymen in the Catholic Church who are forever criticizing government. See them for what they are.